Hello again. Got another guitar to show you. This is one I just made that is a three-quarter size acoustic. Now three-quarter means it's not exactly three-quarter size, it's kind of a designator, but it's about the same size as a uh, Fender MA1 or a Taylor GS Mini. The body length here is 17 inches from this end to this end. And if you want a comparison, a Martin OM, which is a full size, is 19 and a quarter from here to here. The scale length, which is the other dimension we care about a lot, is from here to at least the nominal location of the saddle on this guitar is 23.3 inches. A full-size guitar is like 24 and 3 quarter or 25 and a half. Um, the shape is one I developed using a polar curve fit, but it's very close to an OM or if you know what a uh, uh, Taylor Grand Auditorium is or Grand Concert. It's kind of like that body uh, shape. Now the materials are all ones I picked out myself. Um, just to start on the back, this is a book match piece of uh, very nicely quartered cherry, and the sides are also cherry. Um, the neck is made out of quarter sawn mahogany, and I've got it all scarf joined and everything. The top is made out of salvaged Sitka spruce that I got from Alaska Specialty Woods. I'm a big fan of salvaged and recovered woods because I don't want anybody going out into the nice forests of the Pacific Northwest in the U.S. and cutting down these nice 400-year-old spruce trees just so I can have a guitar. This top came from one that had fallen naturally, I think, and so uh, they didn't have to cut a tree down to get it. It's a, it's a really nice top. I like it quite a lot. The bridge is made out of thermally treated uh, maple, so it's torrified maple. And then the trim is all made out of walnut. And the reason I'm made out of walnut, you can see it's got a walnut uh, uh, head plate cover and a walnut uh, fretboard. This walnut tree was cut at Purdue University, where I work. It was actually cut outside of Ford Dining Hall, if you happen to know where that is. This guitar's got some other features that I made to try to check out some, some new ideas I was trying out. One, is that if you look here closely, you can see this neck is screwed on from the front. There's actually three, three, yeah, three stainless steel screws going through the neck into the uh, block inside the body here. It's kind of like how a bolt-on neck uh, works with an electric. Now this separates it from the normal dovetail or the, some of the more complicated bolted joints you see on acoustics. It's a lot easier to build and it's a lot easier to set up. It's easy to get the action right when you can have access to the front. This neck has been off several times while I was setting the guitar up and it was dirt simple. If in time this guitar ever needs to be reset up, you know, the, the, the angle of the neck changes because the wood here is distorted over time, which does happen to guitars. Pull those three screws out, throw a shim in it, put it back. It'll take 15 minutes. Now it's got a heel, or at least a partial heel on it, and I put that there, not because it needs to be there, structurally it doesn't, but because when you go down the neck, your hand expects to feel that. You need, you're, you're using that to let, your, uh, let you know where you are on the guitar. And so I put a little bit of, a, of a, a heel on there just for the sake of your thumb and your palm to know where you were on the neck. The tuners are some of my favorite tuners. These are uh, Grover Stay Tights. They're 18 to 1, so they're nice fine tuning tuners. The quality is very good. The price is real reasonable. I pretty much need a reason to use something other than these. You can't see it in here, but the neck has got a uh, uh, bitter root double acting truss rod, so there's, there's never going to be any problems setting the action. The saddle here is made out of uh, micarta, which is a man made material that works really well for this sort of thing. The bridge pins are, I believe those are either ebony or rosewood, ebony I think, and they've got little mother of pearl inlays in them. So the nut is made out of bleached bone, and I intonated the nut. You can't see it too well on this video, but this uh, the neck has got some features in it that I build into my guitars to reduce the frequency errors as you play. This fret has been shifted that way by about 50 thousandths. This fret has been shifted that way by about 25 thousandths and this end of the fretboard has actually been reduced by about another 50 thousandths. And then there's a, a intonation in this nut here. So this guitar is more precisely in tune than you'd normally expect for a guitar this small. Now to try to make the sound a little bigger, and when I say bigger I mean I need more low frequency sound out of it. Uh, little guitars don't generally have a lot of low end. Physics just isn't on your side. 
one of the things that you can do, and this is something that's been around for a long time, is to put an insert into the sound hole that goes down a little ways. Normally when you look in the sound hole you just see whatever the thickness of the top is. So I took aircraft grade uh, birch plywood suitable for load carrying structures on manned aircraft. So this is real primo stuff. And I heat bent it into a circle and set it into that uh, sound hole. And this goes down about three quarters of an inch. What this does is this lowers the fundamental frequency of the body. So this guitar sounds bigger than it is. Now these sides are made out of solid cherry, and it's quarter sawn, and it sat in my shop for a good while before I use it, so it's nice and air dry. But before I uh, uh, glued the sides together, I laminated a layer of that same one millimeter birch plywood, the aircraft grade plywood, to the inside of these sides. So these things will absolutely never split. They should retain their shape approximately forever, like when the earth spins into the sun, these sides are still going to be nice and straight and unsplit. I'm trying to think what else to show you here. Also, that I carved a volute in the neck. I really like this. This rounded shape here on the neck. When you, when you grab a cord, especially if you grab a, an E like that, like I do, it's really nice to have your hand fit right into that nice rounded pocket there. Just love it. I guess one last thing. The, I work at Purdue University and the school colors are gold and black. Well, there's a lot of kind of gold on this guitar anyway. thought I needed a little more black. So I put a 0.8 millimeter black veneer layer in between the uh, quarter sawn uh, mahogany headstock and the book matched walnut headstock cover. So if you look close in there, there's a little black layer there. And I also put a 45 degree bevel here so you can see that little black uh, curved stripe there. Now this guitar is for sale on reverb, so if you're looking at this soon enough, I guess, after I record it, you may see it on reverb. Uh, just to let you know, 100% of the proceeds of the sale go to support the Purdue Guitar Lab. And when I say proceeds, I mean everything but shipping and, and uh, fees for reverb. I take those out. But uh, everything that's left over after that goes into the lab account and helps run the Purdue Guitar Lab for my students. So depending on when you're watching this video, the guitar may have sold already. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my new guitar. And I hope you stay tuned because there are more coming.